Hey, it's Josh Ellsworth with Stalls TV, and I'm excited to present this content to you. If you are confused about how to start decorating apparel, maybe you're overwhelmed by all of the choices that are out there, well, we created this class as part of our Heat Press for Profit live virtual event that was completed in January 2021. I know you're going to love it, and it's going to make your life easier and your apparel decorating business more profitable. Welcome back to our Heat Press for Profit live educational event. This is day two of helping you start or grow your t-shirt business. I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls, and I want to welcome you to this presentation, which is all about helping you get through that confusion of how to get started into shirt decorating, especially designed for beginners. However, if you are an expert and you've dropped in with us today, I'm confident that you'll also pick up some tips and tricks and learn something new today. This can be for all levels. So I uh, want to welcome you back. As you can see, I'm here in my studio set from home, and I have uh, my Hotronics 16 by 20 auto clam set up. I have it on my counter caddy stand uh, with my eight foot butcher block table. And I have all kinds of samples lined up from end to end that we're going to be working with today. Now, in these educational sessions, I love being hands-on with the product, which means we're gonna press a lot today. I also love getting your questions as we're working through the session to make sure you're staying with me, keeping up, understanding the concepts that we're putting forth, or if there's any confusion as we go through this, make sure you ask a question and we'll stop several times throughout the presentation to make sure we can handle that. I'd also like to remind you that if you click the agenda link in the top of the platform that you're probably watching in right now, you can find all of the sessions that are scheduled for today and you can click back into yesterday's sessions which were all recorded and posted for you. So we have some repeat sessions happening today, uh, but know that the presenters now are practice and they'll be bringing a lot of uh, new relevant content your way. Feel free to watch the recording, watch it live with us, it doesn't matter. Today our big event is this class in our show and sell trend series. I can't wait for that series to watch in as we go through the six primary sales categories that you can be selling in your business from t-shirts to fleece to hats to bags to jackets to polos and knits. You're going to learn how to print it all and you're going to learn what's trending. Okay. Today, I have a little bit of a PowerPoint because I, we need to wrap our head around some concepts before we just start making stuff. Because I wanted to really sink in on why a heat press is the, the best investment for any particular business and what advantages it provides. I also want you to understand what product to use when, not only what category to get to from the world of heat transfer, but also some actual product names within those categories that are gonna make your life simple. So we have the presentation already uploaded into the file sections. You can download that uh, so you can review all of the notes afterwards. You can make notes as we're following along and certainly please chat. And if you are chatting, please do it within the Pathable platform. Even if you're watching in Zoom, that'll help us keep it all in one place and make sure we get to your question. All right, are we ready to go? Should be exciting. So let me uh, share my screen here for a second. You have to bear with me. I have my monitor all the way over here to the right of me. And I think you should be seeing it now. We should be good to go. Okay. So if you attended my session last night, which was a lot of fun, it was all about calculating costs and setting selling prices. In that session, I left you with these five keys to a profitable heat printing business. And just to review those keys, because they'll be completely important to what we're talking about here today, is you want to keep your overhead low meaning you don't want to spend too much on equipment. You want to start and stay lean uh, from the very beginning. So it's important that you invest in quality equipment, but it's important that you don't bury yourself in the expense of a lease payment, equipment, et cetera, et cetera, before you even get started. Also, consider what you're doing as a part of your business. Keep in mind, the equipment that you purchase is going to have to be operated and learned by somebody. If you're a startup, that somebody is probably you or maybe a family or a friend. That requires money, that requires time. Think about what you wanna spend your time on in the business and that will help to guide your investments. If you're great at marketing and selling, I'd suggest you spend your time there and try to keep decoration as simple and streamlined as possible, not wasting many hours in the day uh, producing graphics and those sorts of things. So this will all make sense. Next, you definitely wanna pay yourself in the business so you can grow. We're starting up today, but we all wanna expand and grow the business to be bigger in the future to generate more income. And lastly, nimble is a strategy. You need to be able to turn the business on a dime. So you want to make sure that whatever you invest in, that it has a lot of versatility with what it can deliver, because maybe the market that's buying today, we've seen that, right, with events and sports, 
may not be the market that's buying at the same levels tomorrow. So make sure you're considering the entirety of the market. We do want you to target a particular customer type or several customer types so you can speak specifically to them, but you need to make sure your equipment investments are very versatile with what they can deliver. Okay, so with those things in mind, I'm gonna jump into what I think are the four ways that you can possibly print a shirt. We're not gonna spend a ton of time up front here, but I believe it's really critical to have a scope of all the decorating technologies that are available in the market and kind of where they fit in. So you can make sense of what your advantage is with the heat press and how you can uh, stand out. And perhaps even when you would want to expand to one of these technologies, it's not uncommon for one shop to own all four things that I'm showing on the screen. That's a heat press, a screen printing press, embroidery equipment, as well as a direct to garment printer. Plus many shops have more as well, but that's what we're gonna focus on today. So with that in mind, what I wanna do is talk through each technology. I just have one slide on screen printing, embroidery and direct garment printing. So I can hit exactly where it fits in so you can understand. First off, screen printing. Screen printing is a process, guys. There are, depending on who you talk to, there's at least seven steps in the process, upwards of 21. And so there are a lot of things that you have to do to prepare a garment to be printed on a screen printing press. And so what happens it is very basic and fundamental element is you do something called burning a screen. You take an actual screen and more or less you create a stencil so that you can use a squeegee to drag ink through to stick on the shirt. We've probably seen screen printing on a YouTube video or perhaps at a trade show or even in a person's shop and been exposed to this print method. It's an age old print method. It's been very popular for years and it still has a place in the market. So I'm not saying don't invest in screen printing. I'm just saying, make sure you have the right model where screen printing is going to make sense if you do invest in it. So from a footprint standpoint, this isn't small equipment. Yes, you can get some desktop equipment, but really to make the most of screen printing, you need to be dedicating about 200 to 400 square feet of space to be able to have a screen printing press. Ultimately a four station press, um, there's a variety of price points in the market, but for a quality machine, you're looking at around $7,500 in investment. And of course the investment level goes way up from there if you're going into more stations or even an automatic machine, often reaching 40, 50, 60,000 or more. Next, what's needed? You need to have that four station press. You need to have a flash dryer at the very least to be able to cure the ink. And you need to have an exposure unit, a washout booth, inks, chemical screens. There's a lot of different steps in the process. That's why you need this space. That's why you need the knowledge and the understanding of how to do it. There's certainly a lot of educators out there that can help you with screen printing, but keep this in mind. The top challenges of this is I need to have a certain quantity for it to make mathematical sense. So if you think about it, you have all these steps in the process which require time to prepare this screen. That screen is going to be literally one design that you're going to be able to print onto a shirt. And so you have to have a certain quantity of shirts to be able to make sense of how much that screen costs and how much it costs to make from a time standpoint. I find that with screen printing, once you get to 144 shirts or more, it tends to make a lot of sense. Uh, quantities below that, I really think we need to think about whether or not it makes sense for our business. Many heat printers that I know out there partner with a contract screen printer rather than investing in the equipment. And this is how they get decoration done with a screen printing result. However, I'm gonna show you an easier way that you can keep it in house if you want to today. Next, embroidery. Embroidery, I think we understand the process. This is a needle and thread and these are stitches on the garment. Most of us own an embroidered shirt or an embroidered hat. Odds are it's a left chest logo on that nice corporate polo that you've bought at some point in time. Now, if you want that look, it's a great look. It has a high perceived value and there's certainly a lot of people in the market that want embroidery. It doesn't take a very small space. It's about a hundred square feet for a single head machine. In the, in the uh, photo you see in the bottom right, uh, we're looking at a uh, six head machine. Um, and, and basically that's the multiples up that you're sewing of one time. And so for instance, the hat job that's being sewn on the bottom, you would, have to, you would wanna sell in multiples of six because you're going to be doing six at a time on the machine. Something to keep in mind with embroidery, um, every item that you're going to embroider needs hooped and every design needs digitized. Uh, there's some complexities to digitizing. You'll see a lot of contract services available out there for digitizing, but it does require, I'd say, a different level of art talent to be able to produce. We have many, many, many embroiderers that also invest in heat presses to complement the business because frankly, embroidery is its own unique look. 
I don't even think it's comparable to what a screen print is or a heat transfer is. They're just two completely different things. So we see embroidery paired with a lot of these other technologies we're talking about. Um, it's just tends to be a little bit more of a learning curve, um, a, tends to be a little bit higher investment. We can see about $13,000 for a single head machine. And then ultimately it's the speed, right? You're actually penetrating with needle and thread through the garment. And so as your design gets larger, your stitch count goes up and it takes more time to produce one piece. Again, how much money can you make in the business? How many pieces can you produce per day? We'll start to generate the profit, right? So output will certainly depend on the number of heads. Like I said, we're gonna fast through this really quick because I wanna get hands on, but I want you to have a scope of all the decorating technologies that are out there, at least the big four as I see them. That third one is direct to garment printing. So this is a buzzword and, and, a, and a term a lot of people know. It sounds like the most obvious way to print just directly on the t-shirt, right? When you think about it logically, that should be the easiest way and that should be the technology that is the best period. Well, not so much. But let's talk about what is great about direct to garment printing. Number one is you can print to order and it's ideal for low quantities. So if you want a single shirt, again, doesn't make sense for screen printing, but I can print a single shirt, a quantity of one with direct to garment printing. There is a huge range of direct to garment printer sizes and styles that are out there. Ultimately, you'll need about 100 square feet dedicated to a direct to garment printer workflow because not only will you need the machine, you'll need a pre-treat solution and a heat press or a dryer to cure the print. It's a multi-step process. I'll put it very simply. Basically what happens is you start with a blank shirt, you pre-treat the shirt, which is spraying it with a solution, which can either be done inside of a machine that you buy for that task or by hand to prepare it. Typically you would load that pre-treated shirt into a heat press to flatten down the fibers of the shirt. Then you load it into the printer, you print your design, after the design's been printed onto the shirt, you load it back onto the heat press or send it through a screen printing dryer, which is much larger than a heat press uh, with very low pressure or, or hovering pressure to be able to cure those inks, okay? So it's a multi-step process to get to one shirt. On some of the higher end machines, it can be profitable. But what I find for startups, it's a solution that is super expensive to get into and requires that the machine be running somewhat consistently. Otherwise, you will start to have issues with inks and clogging. I think it's a great technology, but for a startup, I certainly don't think this is the place to get started. It'll limit you on what garments you can create, and it's ultimately gonna suck a lot of capital to get started at that 20 grand or higher price point for a machine worth getting, okay? So top challenges, maintenance, speed, and product variety. What can I make with it? By and large, DTG machines are great for flat items like t-shirts and hoodies and those sorts of things. Some machines claim they'll do polyester. They're getting better, uh, but you certainly can't do the wide range of apparel and items like you've seen yesterday if you were here with heat printing and what we'll go through today. Okay, um, any questions coming in on any of these three technologies, Vicki? I kind of want to um, just make sure we're not losing anybody here. No, you're good. Okay, all right. And then number four, of course, my personal favorite and why we're here today is to talk all about heat transfer. It's important to understand how it fits in scope of the whole decorated marketplace because there is a lot you can do with the heat transfer. And the cool thing is I like to say heat transfer is an entire umbrella of decoration methods. It's not a one trick pony that can only do one thing like some of the other technologies that you see out there. In this case, there are literally thousands of looks you can create and thousands of styles of items that you can decorate. That's why we have our print more series that we did yesterday and we'll do again today. But generally heat transfer is ideal for print to order. That's really a good thing when you think about not committing your financial money to pre-printed inventory or relying on large quantity runs. The fact that you can do one piece, six pieces, 48 pieces profitably is great. It's good for those low to mid quantities. It doesn't take a lot of space as you see in my space and we'll get a closer look here. Um, I literally have an eight foot by 25 inch countertop that I can run my entire production area in. And you know, I have a lot of space here. I could probably do it with, with much less. The investment size, and I'm gonna walk you through some of my favorite heat presses in this presentation, is anywhere from $800 to $4,500, depending on the machine for you. But that's a quality machine, even at the $800 mark. But I'll walk you through those decisions. All you need is a heat press and a transfer supplier. Of course, that's what Stalls and Transfer Express specialize in, is the transfers and the heat transfer vinyl. So I'll certainly walk you through the choices available today and show you that literally just with a heat press, nothing else, 
how you can make an entire profitable business with a small amount of space. Now, the top challenges with heat transfer, just to hit it up front, is volume orders. If you get an order for a thousand pieces of the same logo, you can absolutely do it on the heat press. But unless it's a unique finish, like um, a puff or something dimensional or a patch, you probably would be better to get that flat design screen printed once you go up into certain quantities. That's why a lot of our heat transfer decorators have a contract screen printer that they rely on so they can handle those large runs, but you need to make sure you can trust that printer that they won't take your customer. So I have a lot of heat transfer customers that will keep those jobs in house and spend the time because they can still make money and they can keep control of their customer. And that's a decision you'll have to make in your business. Now, one of the top challenges with heat transfer is understanding the product choices. I'm actually a little bit offended that I heard a product mix referred to as the Cheesecake Factory menu. But if that's you and you're confused by all the choices that are out there in heat transfer, I'm going to make it super simple for you today. I'm going to give you a handful of products that are going to be able to accommodate 95% of the business that you want to do. Yes, there are choice in all the product categories that you can get into other things. But if you're just starting, I'm going to keep it super simple and walk you through the choice. But before we go there, I want you to see the possibilities. So I call this the umbrella of heat transfers. This isn't an exhaustive list, but these are what came to my mind in five minutes of brainstorming as I'm writing the, the uh, products that can be applied with the heat press. So you can see what's highlighted. That's what we're going to spend our time and energy on in this class, because I think that's where a beginner should start. And that's heat transfer vinyl, HTV, highlighted in red, screen printed transfers, highlighted in yellow, digital screen printed transfers, which is what I'm wearing on my shirt, highlighted in the pinkish purple, and digital HTV, basically a print and cut. HTV highlighted in light blue. Now, in addition to that, you'll see words like sublimation, embroidered patches, 3D embroidered patches, leather, flex style, twill, rhinestones, foil, reflected, sublimated twill, more, 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 and we're always innovating. So the point is, once you get a heat press and once you truly master the basics, you can make a great income just on the basics. Don't get confused by all the options out there. You can start to incrementally add one. I'm gonna lay out a plan on the way I think you should invest to get started and how you should move through products in this presentation. All right, so without further ado, let me start by talking about my roadmap for heat press success. This is a four phase roadmap, but today we're gonna spend the majority of our time on phase one on exactly where you get started. So if you're starting your t-shirt business, my number one recommendation is buy the best heat press you can buy. Um, don't cheap out on the heat press because the business will stop and you'll go out of business right there if you don't invest in a quality heat press. Time, temperature, and pressure are critical elements. You don't get those right, the stuff you produce is going to fall off the garment and you're gonna have all types of challenges. Now, the best quality press at the best budget price point that we have is the A to Z swing away press. I'm gonna show you a short five minute video on this in just one moment so you can see the outline of this press and how it works. And we also have a heat press comparison class tomorrow where we'll go more in depth comparing the, some of the presses that you'll see here today. But the A to Z heat press is a great option. I put that in the, we have a good, better, best outline of heat presses I'm gonna show to you. I put that in the good category. Uh, it's an $800 price point here at the event if you purchase by Friday, and it's 800 bucks. Uh, it's a 15 by 15 inch size. Now I wanna make sure you understand the better and the best categories as well before I show you the videos. The one we're gonna be working today that I put right in the middle is if you can afford it, go to this over the A to Z because it is a better machine. The Hotronics Auto Open Clam. Now you'll get time temperature uh, just the same and quality results. But once you jump into this Hotronics Auto Open Clam, you get a 16 by 20 inch print area. So you get a larger area that you can print then with the A to Z at 15 by 15 inch. However, you also jump up in price. Not only do you get the larger print area, but you also get a digital reading on the pressure, which we'll show you how that works today. You'll see me use it a lot. And so there's absolutely no guesswork on what pressure is that transfer being applied at. And pressure is one of the critical elements when you're applying transfer. So if you have a digit that helps you measure it, it's going to help you. But we can see we're getting up into the $2,000 price point. If you have that budget, I'm confident. If you can sell, I can show you that you'll make a return on this press very quick. And then if you already have your machine and you're dropping in on this class as an intermediate or expert user and you're looking to upgrade it, my favorite machine that we sell, if I can invest in any machine, is our Tabletop Hotronics Air Fusion. Of course, the dual air fusion is better. It's up in the $7,000 price point, but I love this air fusion press because now all of a sudden everything is air operated. 
where I can just lock it down with two touches of a button. So I want to make sure I mention that if you just absolutely want to go for it all or you're upgrading to make sure you look at that machine. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to stop sharing this screen for a second. I'm going to do my best to show you this A to Z video, and then we're going to get hands on for pretty much the last 40 minutes of the class together and walk you through uh, some transfers here in a moment. All right. Here we go. Hi, I'm Josh Ellsworth with Stalls and Stalls Transfer Express, and I've been educating people through video for the past 10 years on how to print high quality t-shirts. Now, I'm excited to introduce to you a new heat press that we manufacture. It's called the A2Z heat press. That's because it can print everything from A to Z. And best off, it fits in a small space. This is a high quality machine. It's made in the USA and you can really create products that can generate repeat customers. Let me show you how it works. The first thing I want you to notice about this machine is that it swings away. This gives me a complete heat free workspace to place my t-shirts and also to position my design. I have a high quality t-shirt here that I'm just going to load onto the press and make sure my pressing area is completely flat by just draping the collar off of the back edge of the press. I programmed the press to 360 degrees. It has accurate digital time and we know that's exactly the temperature that it is anywhere on this heat pressing surface. I'm going to preheat my garment by locking it down for just a few seconds and then open the machine. There's a nice handle to swing the machine away, and then I'm going to position my design. This is a screen printed transfer, and we make them from transferexpress.com. This is actual screen printing ink, and the big secret here is that you can now screen print from home with this machine with the same durability that you see in the retail store. Position your design where you'd like it onto your garment, bring the heat press back into the location, and lock it down. This transfer only takes four to six seconds to heat apply. Once it's complete, I open the press and I peel the back of my design. And I have a design that sticks and it stays through many washes. Now, not only can this press print screen printed transfers, it can also print heat transfer vinyl. To heat apply the version of heat transfer vinyl that we have, I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the temperature on my digital control board down to 300 degrees and we will set the timer for 10 seconds. We're going to apply a glitter design that's been cut on my Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutter. We'll wait for the press to cool down and I'll show you how to print a bag. When printing an item like a bag, there is a lot of seam structure. So it's not just a product you can lay on top of a press and be able to print with any accuracy because you need to get your item flat. Now the A to Z heat press has a semi-threadable design. That means when we look underneath it, we can actually split our item open, whether that's from the front or from the back, to load it easier to get rid of that bulk and seam. Let me show you how it works. You just split the item open, and we are going to slide it up on the press. That gets me the start of a flat printing area, and then I'll either take a heat printing pillow or what we call a print perfect pad, and I'll slide it under the item to make sure that that print location, which is right here with my monogram glitter design, is higher, uh, it's raised versus all of these seams. Now, this heat press does have an adjustable pressure. It's right here on the back of the machine. And it's okay that it's on the back because it is a swing away style press that locks straight down when you're using it. So I'll bring the machine over center. I'm going to retract the pressure just by turning this counterclockwise. And I'm gonna lock the machine down to get a feel for the pressure. And I'll just make adjustments until I get an accurate pressure on the print location that I want to use. I have the machine set. We'll position our glitter heat transfer vinyl design. We'll bring the press back over center and I'll press it for the 300 degrees for 10 seconds. So whether you wanna decorate t-shirts or bags, you can do it on the A to Z heat press, screen printed transfers or heat transfer vinyl very accurately. After it's been applied, I'll peel the backing while it's hot for this design, and I have a high quality, completed result. Very easy to do. Let's move on to our next item. T 
Team uniforms are a big opportunity for your heat press business. I'm going to decorate this mesh polyester football jersey with a product called Thermofilm in pre-cut numbers. For this, I'll need another tool that's a heat printing pillow. The heat printing pillow is going to slide into your jersey to separate the layers of mesh so that they don't stick together when it comes to applying your design. So I'll just slide the pillow in, center the jersey onto my press. Again, I'll swing the press back around and conduct the preheat. I have a nice 15 by 15 inch printing surface, which is going to give me plenty of room to be able to decorate with single or double digit numbers. These come loose with the adhesive on the back. I'll position that into place. In this case, I'll use a craft paper cover sheet and then I'll heat apply. Thermofilm applies for eight seconds. Lock the machine down. It will count down to zero and beep when it's completed. Now let's flip the jersey to be able to print the back. I just need to make some slight readjustments uh, to my pillow. Make sure I can see my print location. Also going to preheat the back. Position my back number into place. Cover and heat apply. Thermofilm is the fastest, easiest way to number athletic uniforms. And the A to Z heat press makes applying thermofilm numbers easier than ever. So pretty cool uh, when you think about everything you can do just with that $800 heat press. So you saw a few of the applications. Now, the products that we used um, in that particular training were really in, in two major categories. It was heat transfer vinyl. That's a little monogram that we cut from a roll of vinyl like I have behind me here and applied to that bag. And then we used the screen printed transfer on the first t-shirt. So those are your two big categories that if you're just starting that you want to think about. The pre-cut numbers that you saw on the last jersey, they're kind of like a category of their own. If you want to get into athletics and you want to do letters and numbers, uh, you can buy those loose numbers uh, from stalls. And not only can you get them in these basic finishes, like pre-cut numbers like this, but you can also get them in special effect finishes. You can always research the styles. Like here is a uh, glitter number. And they're super easy uh, to heat apply. Now, here's where I want to draw the first distinction between uh, the A to Z heat press, which is very good for what it does, versus the better heat press, which is the 16 by 20 auto clam. Okay, so guys, if you're on a limited budget, I would say get started with the A to Z. You can make your payback on that quick and make enough money to invest in an auto clam and then have the A to Z as a backup. It's not a bad idea, but there's some clear difference there. So you'll notice that when I was pressing those jerseys, I needed that heat printing pillow on the A to Z press. But on this press, when I loaded my jersey, I have it set up just like we offer it in the package that I showed you with what's called a counter caddy stand. That gives a completely threadable design, meaning it's open underneath from front to back. It's a cantilever design. On the A to Z, you had that, but it was about midway uh, back. We called it semi-threadable. So you could kind of split and thread, but if you wanted to fully thread, you couldn't get there. And so that's why on this 16 by 20 surface, if you plan to do a lot of athletics, it's a little easier. So I have this football jersey here. It's a mesh jersey. Again, I would have had to insert a pillow, but because of the threadable design on this press, I can just split it, load it on, and quickly get to the back printing area. The other cool thing about a threadable design is if you print a lot of fronts and backs of jerseys or even t-shirts, you can just barely pull the shirt off of the edge, and you can actually spin the shirt right on press to save time. And so that's a, just a little tip on efficiency. But again, to apply the pre-cut numbers, it's super simple. All you're going to do is Preheat, preheat, preheat. So first application of the day to last application of the day, you always want to preheat that garment. And so in this case, I'm just going to preheat for a few seconds. I'm going to go ahead and change the, um, the timer 
Uh, so what I needed to be this applies, uh, thermal film applies in about six to eight seconds. I'm sorry, four to six seconds. So I put it for six seconds. I lock the machine down to preheat while I'm getting my numbers ready. It's an auto open machine. And then I'm just gonna pull apart the numbers there. They come in a stack like this. And then I'll put the dull side down with the semi gloss side up to be able to apply it. Very quick, very easy. If you wanna lay out a double digit number, uh, very quick, very easy to do. And all you have to do is cover it and lock it down for the application. So um, I wanted to get those numbers out of the way because they are kind of like their complete own thing. And as we go through the what to use when chart that I'm gonna show you that's gonna help you, there's really not a super way to be able to do the numbers. But you can see it just like blends in and you know kind of goes right into the mesh holes. Really nice, really durable. Just to show you really quickly as well, on the numbers. Uh, if you want to decorate something like fleece, same thing. Numbers aren't just for team uniforms. You can do uh, fan apparel as well. And so if you're launching online stores and people want to show support to their favorite player, or maybe just the graduation year, whatever it may be, we just did number 88 for on the field. Now I can pop on some glitter numbers for mom or for uh, whoever it might be that wants to support number 88. And same way, I'm just going to position them, cover it with a cover sheet, lock it down to complete my application. So very quick, very easy. If you're just getting started, I always recommend to pop some uh, numbers into your first order. It's just such an easy sale. And again, these ones have a backing on them, the glitter, it's like a special release, but the instructions on the product give you all that information so you can apply them quick, easy, and then the finished result, high shine, glitter, uh, great. Just great finish and this is a texture but it won't flake off for anybody that's used to glitter it's one of our most popular uh, materials so really nice high-end look now with that understanding um, of the differences of the machines that you're getting there um, then we start to talk about okay i heat transfer vinyl screen printed transfers uh, there's all of these different products if i just want to do a logo like this that's on a shirt and put a design on a shirt it's not a, a number it's not a name what do I go to? What do I use? And so we created this chart. If you've been to our classes before, you may have seen it, but it's still absolutely relevant and helpful to everybody. And we call it the what to use when chart, okay? So if you look at it across the top side of the chart, you'll see the number of colors in your design. Across the left side of the chart, you'll see the garment quantity. Again, you can download this presentation, then you'll have this chart. But more or less, you're just going to say, how many colors are in my design? So for the design I'm wearing, I don't know, it's one, two, three, four, probably about four or five colors. So I would go to four or five colors on the color quantity. And if I wanted to make a hundred of these, I would go down and I would end in the red bucket of full color transfers, which are digital screen printed transfers that I talked about. If I were doing, let's say a single color design and I only wanted 12 of them, I would end in the category of heat transfer vinyl. Now, if I have that same single color design, but I want 75 of them, then I'm going to buy a screen printed transfer. So this will help you quickly filter jobs and get to the right technology bucket that you should be using. But again, where it gets confusing for people, I think you can understand this. This is a helpful tool. I've heard great feedback on it. But once you get into that bucket, okay, now what product do I use from that bucket for the job? Because this is where it becomes really confusing. And so I've added to the chart uh, for this presentation that I wanna show you. So when we look at those four buckets that are represented on the chart, also the ones I highlighted under the umbrella of heat transfer technology, I'm gonna apply um, a lot of these here for you today. Uh, these are the top products. So look across the top of the grid. If it's a cotton polyester blend, uh, you're gonna use the product on the left. If it's a heat sensitive garment, like 100% polyester or perhaps a tri-blend, you're going uh, in a tri-blend is cotton rayon polyester, right? So it's, it's heat sensitive, it wants to scorch. You're gonna use the product on the right. Now there's only one delineation and that's in screen printed transfers, which means basically in heat transfer vinyl, just use CAD cut ultra weave. Yes, I know some of you have other favorite products and we do have a ton of selection, but if you're just starting out, we find that CAD cut ultra weave is the absolute best. We're gonna apply it together because it presses down it as low as 260 degrees for heat sensitive fabrics, but it also works great on 100% cotton t-shirt. And so if you get, end up in that heat transfer vinyl bucket, go ahead and buy ultra weed by the roll, uh, like I have here, you can cut it on your vinyl cutter, weed it and get ready to apply it.
in screen printed transfers, that's going to be goof proof. If I'm going to a cotton poly blend that's not super heat sensitive, if it's heat sensitive, I'm gonna to move to ElastiPrints. You can read the rest of the chart on down um, and go ahead and download the presentation and have this, but hopefully you're getting the concept. Again, I don't wanna overly spend much time here because I wanna get into some actual application and show you uh, these products. So no doubt we have some of those products here today and we're gonna decorate some stuff together. Okay, so I love to start with screen printed transfers because I think if you're just starting, uh, there's a reason we put what's called a marketing kit with every heat press that you buy. And this marketing kit is going to be loaded with screen printed transfers for you to use in your business. It actually has 30 display transfers that you can use. So I have all of my display transfers over here uh, in a drawer. And literally it's the marketing kit is chock full of all these sample transfers that you can apply. Um, each one has screen printed designs on it. Um, we match it up with a suggested color of garment, but you can apply these to any color of garment that you want. They'll work on white shirts, dark shirts, doesn't matter. Uh, you can decorate it. No specific fabric content needed, uh, just print it, okay? So if it's cotton poly blend, tri-blend, there's a solution here. So today I've grabbed the two major screen printed transfers I talked about. Remember I had Goof Proof being the number one, that is our best seller by far. And so I've selected a Goof Proof gang sheet design from our display pack, which comes in the marketing kit with any heat press investment. And you can see a couple things here. When you buy a screen printed transfer, uh, you can group multiple designs as long as it's in the same color up on one sheet. I know it's tough to see the white ink on the white paper, but hopefully you're getting that this is a white and yellow uh, design here. I have my main image over here, and then I have my alternate images over here. And so that allows me to save money and decorate more than one product. So again, goof proof, screen printed transfers, or when I start to get lower color counts, but higher quantity. Job comes in for 50 pieces. It's a two color design. All day, I'm gonna be using a screen printed transfer. 75 pieces, one color design, all day. So you'll follow that what to use when bucket, you'll land in the category of screen printed transfers, and you just have to think, do I need goof proof or do I need elasti print? Okay, so let's apply goof proof. So I've ordered this t-shirt in. This is Port & Company t-shirt. It is, I'm reading the tag, it's 100% cotton. It's ring spun cotton. Don't get confused about that. That's just a softer, nicer grade of cotton t-shirt, ring spun cotton. Just a little more attention to detail in the manufacturing of it so you get a nice smooth surface. You wanna offer a softer garment to your customer, ring spun is a great first place to look. And frankly, they're pretty easy to decorate. So 100% cotton is about as easy as it gets. Um, I picked a red shirt intentionally because I'm going to alleviate you from a panic moment. Um, all I'm going to do is split this and I'm going to thread it onto the press, right? And so I'm going to operate from the side so you guys can get see a little bit. But you see, I'm threading that onto the press. I like to pull the press down to the shoulder structure. And so it's just like as if I was wearing it, it would fall on me here, right? And then I like to just make sure that I have it straight and then I retract it back evenly. See that? On both sides until that neck collar just falls off the edge. I always try to keep this area completely flat. Why? Because it's time, temperature, and pressure. If you have anything up on the press area, it's gonna absorb your pressure and potentially impact your print or damage your garment. Okay, so always get it as flat as you can. That's why we do the pillows and the changeable attachments. So you can always get that area flat. Okay, preheat, 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 right? So I'm gonna preheat this. Um, in this case, I'm running goof proof. Great part is every, um, every uh, transfer comes with a recipe to program the heat press for. On that marketing kit, you'll have the instructions for all of the Transfer Express recipes on this nice card stock that you can hang on the wall, or I like to slide it just underneath the caddy uh, of my press. So it's always right underneath there. And so Goof Proof shows me, and this is our new reformulated style that we're gonna press. I can go as low as 325 for 10 to 12 seconds, medium pressure, and peel hot. And it actually gives me a digit. It gives me a seven next to my medium pressure. What does that mean? That means when I lock the press down, there's a little red display. I know it's tough for you to see. It'll read a number out to me. So right now when I lock it down, I'm lucky I'm at a seven. So I know my pressure is locked in. You always wanna check that pressure before you print your first shirt. And then the pressure will hold for all of your remaining shirts in a job. Okay, so it said, what did it say? 12 seconds, yeah, 325, 10 to 12 seconds. So I'm gonna run the 12 seconds, 325. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take my transfer. 
toughest part of printing a, a job with goof proof is just trimming it, right? Which isn't very tough at all, but you want to trim out your main design or whatever design you want to print on the shirt. Uh, try to trim it and, and consider where your transfer is. So you have some edge to line it up straight. And then all I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little, um, I'll just do a little cut right at the center of my design because once I, once I turn it over, it's tough to see the ink through the paper. So if I have that little cut line in my transfer that's centered on the design, I can use that for alignment. And then I'm just going to uh, position it. So I'll position it all on my shirt. Go ahead and make sure I didn't put it upside down. I didn't. And then I will lock it down for the application time. Great thing about the auto open press, about goof proof. When I'm running that lower application, I have 12 seconds, so I can be getting the next shirt ready, folding the shirt I just pressed. You can multitask with this machine, right? It's going to open, and then goof proof is a hot peel, which means I just peel it back right away. Uh, goof proof means you can't mess it up, guys. Uh, and I love that because ruined t-shirts is a bad thing. So you're going to think this one's ruined, but it's not. Let me show you. I'll teach you something here. See that ugly mark on that shirt where the color changed on my red? This is 100% cotton, and you should expect this when you press uh, colors in the red family, maroon, burgundy, etc. cetera. Uh, they'll look like they're marked, but that will go away once moisture returns back to the garment. So don't panic about that. Now, Goof Proof feels great on the garment. It feels like it, it is real screen printed plastisol ink, so it feels so soft. And with this new improved formula, it's even more pliable and stretchable uh, than ever before. Um, so not only is it easy to apply, um, it'll outlast the garment. It's highly durable. You can market this all day as screen printing if you want to in your business. Looks great, feels great, easy to apply. When you're getting started, Goof Proof is your number one product that you need to know the name of uh, for printing items from that screen printed transfer category. As long as a customer gets to a couple dozen pieces, it's going to make financial sense for you and you'll want to be selling jobs with this all day. Why? I don't need to cut. I don't need to weed. I just order, I trim, I press, and I have all this space on the side of the design. So now I can trim those and decorate additional products. How cool would it be if I actually sold through, uh, let's say a face cover um, with this job. I can just trim this off. I can decorate a face cover from the same sheet. Uh, how about if I sold a sleeve print location? You can incorporate that. So group it up uh, onto the sheet. We call that gang sheeting. It's your number one way to make more profit on every job that you do. All right, so we'll fold that up. That's goof proof. Uh, we got any questions, Vicki? Yes, we have a few. Um, okay. So the first one is screen printing more durable than heat printing, but heat printing more durable than DTG? Um, I would say they all can be equally durable if done correctly with the proper equipment, the proper technique, and the, and the quality transfers or, or ink or product. Um, and so when you put them through uh, industrial wash testing or, or normal wash testings with an independent lab, uh, we see heat transfer always perform well. We stop our testing at 50 cycles because we say that's more than the life of the garment. Uh, but certainly I've owned shirts that I've watched most likely hundreds of times. Another one, do you guys have eco-friendly vinyls or transfers? I heard you are CPSIA compliant. Uh, but do you have any environmental or sustainability certified transfers or using natural materials? So um, good question. A little more advanced and starts to get us into other formulas, but just for the interest of that, that's a very specific uh, use case and market. Uh, I would recommend our AquaTrue transfers, which, out, which are water-based. Um, and so that would be your option if you were going on to like a recycled content t-shirt, something like that. Uh, AquaTrue is a great water-based option. From Transfer Express, that's what I would recommend. Um, a question about the A to Z. So mm -hmm. though there is not a digital pressure readout, what is a, a good trick for testing out the pressure with that press? Yeah, so when you don't have a digital pressure readout on the machine, um, it becomes a little bit of guesswork. And I would say a couple of my favorite things about the A to Z is it is so easy to lock down even at a high pressure. It can actually be deceiving. And so the cool thing about that press is you can actually turn the pressure all the way clockwise and eventually it will stop. That'll be your maximum pressure, okay? Um, it'll actually tighten so much you won't be able to swing the head as easy with the way it's designed. But once you turn it all the way, all you do is retract it by one full uh, revolution and then you will uh, have a firm pressure, okay? 
And so that will give you at least the top side of your scale. A light pressure is basically locking down the press with two fingers and a medium pressure for most people, most normal builds would be locking it down with uh, one hand, somewhere in between those two extremes. Okay, uh, is it safe to do a quick post press after to ensure it will stick and last? You can, but in a lot of cases with goof proof, you would be wasting your time, okay? So um, trust me when I say uh, on these hot peel release products where it doesn't lift the edge of the transfer at all, it's going to be highly durable regardless of whether you press it once or twice. But if you wanna press it twice, all you need to do is put your uh, cover sheet on top. I like to use craft paper. Uh, put it back on top and just hit it again for a few seconds or the same application. It certainly won't hurt it. Okay, I'm going to keep moving because there's a couple other applications I want to get to and we'll make sure we do still take questions at the end. All right, so screen printed transfers, goof proof, right? We got it in our memory bank. The next screen printed transfer um, that you need to know about is elasti prints. Okay, on this particular job, I'm going to decorate this 100% polyester uh, performance polo. Um, Elasti Prince is just that lower temp option, and I'm actually all the way up at 325 degrees, so I'm going to start working the press down to 290, which is where I can press Elasti Prince at. Okay, so I'll take a few minutes. I'm going to trim apart my transfer, and as you'll see here, we have the major uh, transfer design uh, on the sheet, which you can see there, and in this case, we've used the extra space to do tagless labels, and so uh, size, name, uh, fabric content. If you watched our what's new section, you'll see the tag along platen, which is really a specialty platen that will allow you to do those tagless labels at the same time as you print the front. But in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and load this on. I'm going to give you a tip because I just had the transfers and I matched the garments afterwards. Usually you want to order the transfer with the garment in mind. Um, and so typically when we load a hoodie, we would load it like this, right? but we have the pocket of the press up on. And so if you can see that, that creates a seam that's up on the press. On 100% polyester, that seam may gloss up, it may scorch, so you wanna be careful with that. Um, what we've done is we have the interchangeable base attachments that are great. On the 15 by 15 inch A to Z press, I'd say just get that six by 10 inch attachment for like small stuff and you'll be fine between the 15 by 15 and the six by 10, but we've packaged on the 16 by 20 presses, not only the six by 10 attachment, but also an 11 by 15. And so I'm gonna step in front of you here and grab my 11 by 15. I'm a little worried that my transfer may be too big for my platen, but we'll, uh, we'll learn a lesson together here. Let's see. Yeah, it is a little bit too big uh, for my platen. And so uh, we're gonna scorch and we're gonna ruin this, okay? And I'm gonna show you uh, how that works. We'll just ruin it together. It'll be one mistake you don't have to make. In hindsight, I'd love to have a transfer that is that fits this that is no larger than this platen, but this one will not fit in either direction. It's just a little bit too big uh, for the shirt um, in the placement and what I need to do. But nonetheless, I have it loaded. Since we're going to scorch it anyways, I'm not going to worry about getting down to the 290 and wasting time. I am going to preheat, but at least we'll be able to see how Elasti Prince uh, looks and, and feels on this. So Elasti Prince is 290 degrees. It's 15 seconds and it's a cold peel. So whenever you look at the peel of a product, a cold peel basically means you wanna wait till it cools completely down uh, before you peel it, which often means uh, removing it from the press. So let's go ahead and lock this down for the 15 seconds at the, should have been 290 degrees. Uh, but you can see the design of the press and how it makes it very easy. You are gonna be loading upside down when you thread your item, but I'm telling you that is ideal. Notice how I caught the handle on a cold peel so I could just release it nice and evenly. The reason loading upside down is ideal once you get used to it is you are at the widest part of the machine. So if you don't have a swing away press, this is going to not make you reach back into the clam to hit the front of the shirt up by the collar. When you have it on this side, the widest open, it's gonna be much more comfortable for you to operate. So think about that. So I like to fold it over, slide it off of the press, and then we put it on the side. I usually put it face down so it pulls the heat out of it to cool it down. Okay, so that is goof proof and elasti prints, which I'll peel as soon as it's cooled down. If you remember from our slide, we said that those are the two products you would need in the category of screen printed transfers. Okay, if you're just getting started, start there. Goof proof for 99% of what you do. If you're doing heat sensitive fabrics, 
then we go over to ElastiPrints, right? If they're gonna score to 325, sometimes the only way to know that is order in some garments and test them at 325 for the 12 seconds and see if they scorch. If they do, I know I need ElastiPrints on that job. So it always makes sense to order the styles that you wanna offer in your business to get comfortable with what works um, before you start ordering a bunch of uh, transfers for your jobs. Now in the heat transfer vinyl category, remember on low color count stuff, we had um, screen printed transfers in that bucket once we were over a certain quantity, heat transfer vinyl is gonna be for everything else that's under that quantity. Okay, so a good example of that is, uh, I just did some New Year shirts uh, for my wife. You may have seen this live if you follow us over at the Stalls TV YouTube channel. And I cut this from Ultraweed, okay? So you can see this was a roll of heat transfer vinyl that went through my vinyl cutter. I cut out the design. I can cut as little as one. In this case, I cut about three or four of them. And then I weed away the excess. You actually do the process of taking your weeding tool and removing the excess. And so believe it or not, most people that come into the industry um, are familiar now with heat transfer vinyl. And the reason why is there's so many craft cutters and desktop cutters um, that are out on the market that uh, you guys are actually more familiar with heat transfer vinyl for the most part than screen printed transfers. Um, but nonetheless, heat transfer vinyl still has a place. But if I were doing this pop the bubbly design in any sort of volume, there's going to be a breaking point that it makes sense to order a screen printed transfer. But nonetheless, you can see how I cleaned up that design after pulling the outside edge in a matter of minutes to reveal my graphic. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the outside edge. So this is ultra weed. Um, the cool thing about ultra weed is it just works guys. It presses down at 260 degrees. If you're on a garment that's more than uh, or less than 50% cotton, but I can use it as 200, at 208 degrees on anything. And so I actually went and grabbed one of the shirts that my wife sells on her website. This is a uh, Bella canvas. Who's uh, one of our sponsors here today. And this is one of their tri-blend styles. Tri means three, right? So there's three fabrics in this. It's 50% polyester, 25% rayon, and 25% cotton. And so, gosh, it feels so nice, so fashionable. Ultra Weed, not only is it gonna be able to press to this down at 260 degrees without scorching it, but it's gonna feel great on there. And so I can use Ultra Weed on anything that I wanna do in my business. So same process is going to apply. This is more of a fashionable cut garment. I could potentially, yeah, and I can split it over the 16 by 20 platen. Um, it's a large size. So if I got into a medium or small, I'm definitely going to have to change out my platen uh, to the smaller size. You guys probably want to see how that works, I'm guessing. So let me just show you that. I don't, I don't know that that's been shown a whole lot. So to change the platen, it's super simple. All you're going to do is unlock the lever on this side. It's tough to see, but it's just the lever you pull out. You're going to grab it corner to corner, and you're going to lift straight out. It has a pin registration system, so it's very quick and very easy to change out. I'm gonna grab my 11 by 15 inch size, which can be loaded portrait or landscape. I like to see more of my shirt, so I'll load it so I can see more of the, the shirt. And this way on the hoodie, it would go the other direction. And then again, I'll just split, thread my garment on, pull it all the way down, and then I'm just going to retract so the collar hangs right off of the edge, okay? Preheat, anytime you change the platen, usually there's a pressure change that has to happen. And then make sure I follow my recipe, which in this case, ultra wheat applies for um, 12 seconds. I can go as low as 260 degrees. It's at 290, which is fine. Take my design that's been prepared, position it in place usually about three fingers down from the collar, very quick, very simple, lock it down, count the money, right? Okay, so 12 seconds, it'll automatically open. At this point, again, if you're multitasking, this is cooled down. So I'll be able to load this, grab this over here and just grab the corner. And in the same way, I'm gonna release the backing corner to corner until it reveals my design. There should be no ink left behind on the paper if you've done it correctly with the uh, screen printed transfer with ElastiPrint. So here's that one close up. Love it. We did the distressed effect on this. That's really cool. So that's an advantage. Never would want to weed all that, right? Um, you get a nice feel, multiple colors in a single press. Another advantage here. Actually, it didn't scorch too bad. have a little bit of scorching on the pocket, but I think it would be sellable uh, for the most part. Certainly, if I would have sized my design down and used the platen like I told you, it would be a little better caliber. 
ultra wheat is a hot peel or it can be a cold peel. So whenever you get to it, but you can certainly peel it hot right away. Just gonna grab the corner, remove the backing, and then boom, we got a completed result. Again, very soft. You can see the thin lines, it's a product that can do fine detail. Again, it's a product that's gonna stick and it's gonna stay. Um, it just feels so nice on this tri-blend. I know you can't feel it through the screen, but you gotta trust me that um, so lightweight, so nice. Um, this is a high-end shirt. Um, I think she sold these shirts for $24. Okay, so lots of profits to be made. Um, and again, she sold them one piece at a time and we made them one piece at a time and it's profitable because we had the art set up. So if somebody orders another one tomorrow, we'll grab the roll, we'll cut it out of the color that they want, boom, and we'll print it, we'll make it, we'll keep it active. All right, so I'm gonna review one more time. I'm gonna go over to my screen and see what else I have. All right, so hopefully this gives you a good idea. Again, I'll go back to the what to use when, on when to use heat transfer vinyl versus screen printed transfers. And then over on the right-hand side of the grid in the orange and the red, that's where we get into the digital options. And so if we kind of think back to our digital options, we had the digital screen printed transfers down at the bottom of your screen, which is ultra color soft. That's the product I'm wearing on my shirt. And then we have the digital HTV, which I recommend CAD prints, express prints, that'll work across a lot of things from Transfer Express because it presses all the way down at 250. Okay, so again, you can download this presentation, but we're only talking about two products here. We're talking about Ultra Color Soft and we're talking about CAD prints, express prints. So you guys know how it works with regular screen printing, regular screen printed transfers and regular heat transfer vinyl. It's the same equation, just once you hit a certain color count, you're gonna to go to the digital options. You're gonna to go to the digital screen printed transfer, right? And the difference is that will come to you like this, where all of the colors are, are printed, you have a clear carrier. Um, it's still screen printing, but it's also grouped with digital printing. And so Ultra Color is a product name you wanna remember because you can group a lot of designs onto a sheet and order as little as five sheets at a time. Or if you just need a single image, if you just want this Sea Life Aqua, or Aquamarine Aquarium, Sea Life Aquarium, you can just order it by the piece too and order 20 small designs. So five is the minimum if you do the full sheet and 20 is the minimum if you do a small design. Okay, so once you get into, I'll just say three or more colors and you're at any sort of quantity that's over 25, 50 pieces, Ultra Color is gonna be your best friend and it's the latest technology that's available. So while Vicky's asking a question, I'm gonna decorate this high end uh, has kind of a mesh insert on the backing, um, really stretchable and, and high-end uh, performance polyester with the ultra color. What do you got for me, Vicki? Okay, this is actually in the Zoom chat. Um, I see you not you you're not using a template to position. Please give your opinion. Okay, so um, if you can have a template to position, it's going to make life easier. So cardboard cutouts is probably the most simple way to do it or your fingers, right? They always remain the relatively the same size. You know, three fingers is a couple inches. You can measure that. Um, cardboard templates will be a step up. And then you can add a laser alignment system if you want to get specific, if you're doing a lot of volume. And so the name of the game, once you get experience with this is eliminate downtime. Downtime is how quickly can I load my shirt? Can I line up my design? And if you get alignment tools, even a T-square, it's going to help you uh, to do that uh, quicker. Sometimes those rulers slow you down. And so the laser alignment tool that we sell helps with that where it shoots four line lasers down onto the press. Okay, I'll take another question while I'm positioning and pressing this. I'm exploring to choose the right business off for me. Heat transfer is new to me. So to apply my designs, must I have a supplier like you to create a heat transferable sheet? I don't do my own designs. How does, the process, how does this process impact my lead time? Yeah, so art is super important. Um, there are really two ways to approach art with everything I showed you today. Uh, number one is your client can provide a logo and you can just upload it uh, to our website at transferexpress.com. And then our team will do the art for you and produce the transfer for you, which is great. Um, so that's the easiest way. Um, the other option is you can create it yourself. So if your client doesn't have a logo and you want to create something from scratch, what you can do is you can go over to transferexpress.com. You can create an account. And you can, for free, use what's called our EasyView Designer. 
And that's where you can work from thousands of clip art and templates and layouts to build artwork from scratch, including full color art like this from uh, Dane Clement from Great Dane Graphics, who has uploaded um, a lot of his full color art into that easy view designer. So not only spot color, but full color, that easy view is your best tool if you wanna build concepts like for school spirit wear or businesses or whatever from scratch, you can do either way. All right, so I'm gonna let this cool completely down and peel it. Uh, this is the ultra color soft. So I'll just grab the corner and peel it away after it's cooled down. Uh, it's a cold peel. And guys, look at that detail. I mean, full color, photo quality. I got even little, it's tough to see, little dots coming up from the dolphins blowhole, I guess. Um, so soft. Uh, this is ultra color. Uh, this is a game changer because you can do multicolor images very quickly, very easy. It's how I printed this. Um, and we have three products within that, but Ultra Color Soft is the one you want to start with. And then as you get more advanced, you can grow from there, but this is great. Okay, so that's going to be um, the other specialty product that's important. I did see a question about, okay, um, what if I have a heat press? Um, what if I have what you're talking about? Uh, where do I go next? And so I want to take you quickly through phase two, three, and four of where I would advance from here. But we're right at 11 o'clock Eastern time. So if you're just starting, I wanna say, guys, right here is where you wanna start with the best heat press out of those ones that I've laid out with these three or four transfer types um, and you can make a complete profitable business. But the question I saw come in is, hey, should I get a vinyl cutter? Because we did show um, something that's been produced out of heat transfer vinyl. And so, uh, yes, that can be phase two for a lot of people is add a vinyl cutter and or a hat press, okay? so. And in this phase two, a professional grade cutter uh, that we have specials on is just under $2,000. And the hat press, which we'll demo later today and throughout the day, is $1,495. So a lot of people will group all of this up and do it at once, uh, but I wouldn't shortchange the heat press investment to get a vinyl cutter or a hat press. I would get the absolute best heat press you can buy first. If you still have money in the budget left over, then absolutely a vinyl cutter is going to be important you could certainly start with a desktop cutter like a Cricut or a Silhouette just to get started and do some small stuff. But if you're going to be serious about this, you'll quickly grow to a professional grade cutter like our Graph Tech or a Roland uh, vinyl cutter. But yes, if you can afford a cutter up front, absolutely. Some people combine phase one and phase two and they do it all in a package. Several people actually did that yesterday and took advantage of the show specials. All right, phase three. Um, those are those price points, by the way, and the ones I recommend. So, but you can get all that under our event specials tab. Um, phase three and phase four is really where I would start thinking about a sublimation printer or a print cut device. And so these are, for the print cut device, it's a sizable um, investment. Um, you really don't need it out of the gate with how far we've come with digital screen printed transfers, unless you really have a demand for super low quantity full color designs and heat transfers um, for apparel, you really don't need the print cutter at the same level that you need these uh, variety of other products in my opinion today. And so it can be a good investment, but you can start by ordering the transfers out and eventually bring that in house later uh, down the road. So those are my startup tips for success. That's the way I would break it up. And those are the products that I would invest in. Um, guys, I own this press. Um, I bought this one about five years ago. I own my vinyl cutter outright. These aren't stalls pieces of equipment, although I did buy them from stalls. Um, so what you're seeing here, are the products that I'm actually using every day and recommending and they stand the test of time. All the products you'll get from us will. And if I were starting over again, I would certainly buy the A to Z press if that was the only thing, um, if that was my budget starting up. The A to Z press with a little uh, silhouette cutter um, that I have in the quarter, something like that, that's gonna get you started for around $1,500 or less once you get supplies and you'll be in great shape. All right, I know I'm allowed to run uh, 10 minutes over, but I want to be respectful. We have other presenters um, in classes that you guys have signed up for. So I promise you, I'm going to look back through the chat and I'm going to answer um, all of your questions the best I can uh, over the next little while. So thanks so much for watching. Make the most of the day. If you want to talk more, uh, please join my Q&A session that's going to be held later today. You can find that under the agenda and I'd be happy to answer any and all of your questions. All right, we'll see you all soon. Hope you enjoyed this class.